everyone, this is Lorena from Hummingbird Sewing. Today we're working on the 2030 QDC Janome sewing machine. First, I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin. So when you have your spool of thread, the machine comes with two thread cap options. There's a larger one for larger spools of thread and a smaller one if you have a smaller style. You mount your thread on horizontally. It does not matter whether the thread crosses over the top or comes from under underneath. Put your thread cap on so it's secure. There's a button on the top of the machine here and this is only used for winding your bobbin. Holding the thread securely in both hands, you want to floss that thread through that tension button. And then this is your bobbin for specifically for the Janome uh, sewing machine. Do not use your other bobbins that you may have in other sewing machines. Do not use metal ones. They're not all universal. Use the ones that came with your sewing machine. There's a little hole in the top of the spool of the bobbin. You'll thread your thread up through the little hole in the top of the bobbin and having it come out the top. Now there's also a little on the post that holds the bobbin. You'll see a little catch here on the side. There is a notch inside your bobbin. You want those two to lock together. So to do that, we'll put the bobbin on the post, hold the post down with one finger and rotate the bobbin until it locks in place. You'll hear a little click. And you'll see that the, um, the two post and the bobbin now work together. Holding your thread up high, move the post to the right hand side. That will disengage your needle and it will show on your screen a bobbin. You can push the start stop button. Do not let go of this tail of thread. Continue to hold that thread. Do not let it go. It will break off. Now when you're finished winding your bobbin, move the post to the left and then cut your thread in between. Your thread will come out of that tension post there and we're going to start threading the machine. So again, holding the thread in both hands, coming up behind, you'll see the pictogram of the arrow. This is the first position. You'll see number one, it comes down the front under number two and you want to check that your take-up lever is in its highest position. If you're unsure of that, you can use your needle up-down button. Put your needle down, push it again, it will bring it back up. Slide the thread behind and holding tension at the top again as well by the spool. Pull it up and it will come in and engage into the little hole in that take-up lever. Bring your thread down to number four and then there's a little catch at the top that the thread passes in behind and another little thread catch to the left hand side at the top of the needle where your thread will slide in behind that and down the front. Now we'll use the needle threader that this 2030 QDC has. So on the left hand side I like to hold my thread in my right, thing, in my right hand. Pull the needle threader down. You'll see two plastic positions where the thread has to slide under. I like to hold the needle threader in place with my index finger and then with my pointer finger I'll guide the thread under the first catch and then it will come across the front where you see the little red arrow and under the second white catch. With your thread at a 45 degree angle holding it just gently, raise the needle threader back up you will see a loop that the needle threader has caught coming out the back of the needle and you want to pull on that loop to pull the thread right through the needle. Now your needle's threaded. Now we'll, wind, we'll put the bobbin into the bobbin holder. There's a little catch on the side here that locks the bobbin cover in place. You can pull that out. You can see on the bobbin case it does the case cover, it does show you the positioning of your bobbin. There is a right and wrong way to put your bobbin in. Make sure that when you have your bobbin thread, it passes off to the left hand side as shown in the pictogram. 
it creates a bit of a letter P shape and then you can put your bobbin into the bobbin case and the tail of the thread will come down. There is also a little arrow on the case that shows you bringing it up and off to the left. Then holding your needle thread, you can use the needle up down button, needle down and back up. Let's try that again. Needle down and back up. Sometimes if you hold too much tension on your top thread, it won't complete the loop and that's what happened there. You can then pull that bobbin thread up and through and you can double check with your thread passing over the top of the bobbin. That's in the correct position. You can take your two threads, pass them under the presser foot and off to the back left and replace your case cover. In down. We have set up all the accessories that come with the Janome 2030 QDC. You'll see set up on your machine is the A foot, also known as your zigzag foot, your C foot, which is your over edge foot, your E foot is your zipper foot, your F, which is your applique foot, and your G foot, which is your blind hem foot. This cute little triangle piece is your screwdriver. You can use that to undo the screws and your uh, presser foot as well as your needle bar. You'll see some extra bobbins in your kit as well. This is your secondary spool post for if you're using a twin needle and of course your larger spool cap, the smaller one we have set up on our machine, has extra needles, a cleaning brush, a stitch ripper and of course your foot pedal. The additional quilting attachments that come with this machine, you have your free motion quilting foot, your walking foot and guide bar, your open toe applique foot, and your quarter inch piecing foot with a metal guide attached. This is your seam guide, which attaches to the main body of the machine. So we're gonna take you through the stitches here. As you begin sewing, your machine is all threaded up you have your bobbin and your spool threads off to the left side and you place your fabric. Your presser foot lever is on the right hand side, the inside of the machine and you lower that onto your fabric in a position where the needle will start into the fabric. Your double zero stitch, this is your display setting for all of your stitches. Your stitch style will set up here. Then you will see which presser foot you are suggested to use. This number here is your stitch width, and the next number to the far right is your stitch length. To go through the different stitches, you use your cursors left or right to take you through the numbers, and then you have the option for your width and your length to increase or decrease using the cursor buttons here. I will show you when you set up your machine, your stitch double zero will give you a 3.5 needle position setting, which is center position and a 2.2 millimeter stitch length. We'll push our stop and start. And at the slower speed, this is your speed selector. You can move it at any position. When you're using your foot pedal, if it's at full speed, you still have the option to select higher low speed depending on how much pressure you put on the foot pedal. And we stop. If you choose to use your back stitch, that's this button here. When your machine is running, you hold down the back stitch for the length of time that you'd like your back stitch to run, and then release it, and it will continue stitching forward. Another option the 2030 QDC has is to tie off a knot. As you're sewing when you're completing your stitch, you can push the button once. The machine will tie off a knot, and it will stop when it's completed. Then you can raise your foot presser foot, there's a little cutter off to the side of the machine that you can run your thread behind and it will cut it off. And there you have your back stitch and your knot, which you can see formed on the back and your thread cut off. So the options that you have in changing this double zero straight stitch length is you can change the width. The width when it's in straight stitch simply moves the position of your needle. If you're a quilter and looking for that scant quarter of an inch, you may choose to move that to the left or right. Um, 
which by moving your cursor up or down will decrease or increase this number. As you increase the number, you'll see that the needle does move to the right-hand side. As you decrease the number, it will move to the left-hand side. Also great if you're doing specific top stitching or a distance from the edge of the presser foot. Your stitch length will change. Move your cursor to the right. You can see the underscore there. There's your stitch length. You can increase it or decrease it as you wish. If you want to have a long basting stitch, you're at a five millimeter stitch length, or if you choose to decrease, you can have a very much closer stitch length, which is great for quilting or piecing at a 1.8. If we come across and move to our next stitch, which is stitch number one, it's a straight stitch. It simply moves your needle to left of center. It's a nice convenient stitch if you need your needle on the left side. Stitch number two, this starts and stops with a back stitch. As you start sewing, you'll see that your machine will automatically start with a reverse stitch. It gives a perfect number of four stitches, and then it will continue sewing. The nice thing with this convenient stitch is that you can start and stop as often as you wish, and it will not engage the back stitch until you push the back stitch button. You push it once, it will give you perfect four stitches as a back stitch and then the machine stops automatically. So that's just a nice convenient stitch. I'll pull that off and you can see. So I've started and then with the one push of the reverse button, it stops on that reverse stitch. The next stitch is very similar. It's your stitch number three and it starts and stops with a knot. So as soon as you start, it automatically creates a little knot. Again, you can start and stop your machine. You can pivot and turn corners, sew whatever you wish, as long as you just push the start and stop or use your presser foot if it's engaged in the machine. As you're sewing, when you do want it to stop again, push that knot. It automatically creates a knot for you and then it stops. So again, those are just your straight stitches. You can still adjust your stitch length one starts and stops with the back stitch, and one starts and stops with a knot. The next stitch we have is stitch number four. And with stitch number four, it's like a back stitch. And this is a great security safety stitch. If you have a seam that you keep splitting, you can put this style of stitch into the seam allowance, and it just gives you extra security. It stabilizes, it's a very sturdy stitch as well. So there's that stitch run off there. The next stitch is stitch number five. This is a little lightning stitch or a little zigzag. It's a very shallow zigzag. And this one is especially nice if you have to repair a hole in a t-shirt in the side seam, or if you need a stitch that has a little bit of stretch, uh, but not the full zigzag style of a stretch. Your number six is the same style of stitch with your needle left of center. And you can see that very nice little lightning style stitch. Gives you a little bit of flexibility. When you need a lot of stretch, then you're working with stitch number seven. When you set it up, there's a standard width of five millimeters wide and 1.5 millimeters in length. Now, anywhere along your zigzag, the, uh, the zigzag's very flexible in that you can change your stitch width and your stitch length. So if we come over to the stitch width, and we decrease it. Let's decrease it to two millimeters and see how that looks. And then as an alternate, I'll go over and I'll switch the stitch length. We'll decrease that to 
And here you can see how in that zigzag, there's a lot of versatility and options depending on how wide you want the width of the stitch to be and how, um, how long you want the stitch to be. So again, if you're looking at these two, the zigzag on top of this number shows you the width, so how wide the needle will swing from left to right, and the one on the right is the length, how far the distance is between the needle going into the fabric uh, lengthwise. So you can see lots of flexibility and variations in that stitch number seven. Similar to stitch number eight, we come across and go up one. With stitch number eight, it's a very stretchy, very flat zigzag. It is called a three-step zigzag. Also option to change the width of that zigzag and change the length as you wish as well. This is where it's nice to speed it up if you have those decorative stitches. So you can see in that three-step zigzag also a lot of variation. The three-step zigzag is very flat, very stretchy. It's fantastic for repairing things like underwear, elastic, uh, swimsuit elastic, anything that's super stretchy where straps or tags or things need to be either altered, replaced, or mended, or to create something new. Stitch number nine goes into our over-the-edge stitch. And this is where you'll see a change on your display. This is showing you presser foot C. And that's this foot here. You can see when you observe it, there's a little brush on the edge and there are two little pins on the bottom. What the stitch does is it will go over the edge. It finishes your fabric very nicely. I'll demonstrate. And as it finishes the edge of your fabric, it's a bit like a faux surged edge. If you have a serger, uh, you know what that's like. But what it does is it keeps those edges from fraying. So to remove and replace the presser foot, there's a little button at the back of the presser foot. You release that, just push it towards you, and it will release the foot. And then you'll see on the foot there's a little bar, as all of the feet have. This is how it's installed into the foot holder. You slide that little um, bar under the foot holder, and then we'll lower the presser foot onto it to click it into place. And again, if you don't aim properly, just keep moving it along forward or back and it will finally click into place. So I'll show you this stitch. I'm just gonna work on the very edge of my fabric. And what this stitch does is the stitches form over those pins and over the edge of the fabric. And you'll see, actually one of my beginning threads got caught. I'll just release that out of the way there. And you can see that gives you a nice little over the edge stitch, keeps that edge in place so you won't have frayed edges. Nice for just finishing a simple project that might get a lot of use out of it. Our next stitch is stitch number 10. It's the blind hem foot and that is, as you can see on your display, foot number G. We'll insert that foot in and pass our thread underneath. To set up your blind hem, the raw edge of your hem, you'll turn in a little allowance, as much as you wish, or the full depth of your hem, whatever you wish. This is great for curtains or pants or skirts, anything where you don't want the top stitching shown on the right side of the fabric. So you'll line up your hem, imagining this is your curtains or drapes or your garment, and then you turn that hem back on itself so that the underside is facing up. The guide on the inside of your foot is going to guide just along that fold in the center. Make sure your needle is going to start into the fabric as you begin. 
When it's completed, it will look like this. And then as you flip that hem back down, this will be the wrong side, and there's the right side. It leaves those little dash lines as your hem. So that's a really nice finish. Following stitches from 11 onward, you have a lot of decorative stitches, applique, satin, some beautiful other decorative stitches. You can play with those and experiment with them. We'll proceed on to the buttonhole stitch. So the buttonhole, uh, the presser foot looks like this. It's quite a little um, design. Uh, it makes a one-step buttonhole for you. If you can't find this in your bag, it's usually tucked into your free arm accessory tray that inserts to the front of the machine. If you open it up, you'll see it inserted inside there. Now the buttonhole foot, you're going to take your button. This side of the foot slides backwards away from you. You insert your button and you close it up just so that it's nice and snug in there. You'll see the little fingers at the front of the foot. These are going to face you, and the little bar here, this is where your presser foot holder clips into. So we'll slide this into place here, and lower the foot onto it. Now, as with any time that you're creating a buttonhole, you'll need some stabilizer in your item whether it's down the front of a placket of a shirt or into a, a drawstring bag if you choose to use a buttonhole. Make sure, again, there's a little bit of stabilizer uh, in between. Now, the, your buttonhole always works away from you. So if you need to create several buttonholes on an item, you'll want to start, you'll mark the very front of the starting point of your buttonhole as it works itself backwards. To begin, I always like to put my needle down and back up just to bring up that bobbin thread. If you're holding onto your top thread, your needle down and up, and you'll see that bottom thread come up. The nice thing with starting out this way is then your bobbin thread doesn't get tangled and snarled up in under your buttonhole. So the other setup that we need, we have our buttonhole, our buttonhole foot set up, our threads on the top, and then there's a lever in behind. You'll see the one in the front, this lever is for your th needle threader. And there's one in the back, it's a black one. You pull it all the way down and it's what will determine the size of your buttonhole. Then you can proceed with making the button. Hole. I just like to hold the starting threads out of the way. And you can see when the buttonhole is finished, it will stop stitching for you. You can raise your presser foot, pull it out, and there's your buttonhole. Then you can go in and clip those threads. The machine automatically ties off a knot for you, so there's no need to worry about those tails. And there's your beautiful buttonhole. Now to cut it open, I like to use the stitch ripper that comes with the machine. Always start at the end points and cut towards the center. Don't start at one end and cut right through. You could cut through those bar tacks at the end. So push your stitch ripper into the end, cut towards the center, and then rotate it. Stitch ripper into the end, cut towards your center. There's your buttonhole. And you'll see when I pop the button out of the buttonhole foot, that button then slips nicely through that button. buttonhole. It's uh, perfectly sized for it. So the next great stitch is number 27. You'll see that you have the three different buttonhole options, a rounded end and a keyhole end, which is great for a jacket or something heavier. If we go up to stitch number 27, this is your darning stitch. 
For this one, you do not need to have that lever down for your buttonhole, but you do still need to have your buttonhole foot in place. Again, this one will work from front to back. And then you can just start your stitching. This is great for mending holes in an article of clothing. It creates a little patch of stitches for you. And when the machine is completed its full width, you can see it gives you a nice little patch of mended stitches. So the next stitch is 28, that's a bar tack. And this is great, this uses um, presser foot number F, which again is your applique foot. That's your clear one here. Slide it into place. I put my threads under my presser foot again. This is another one that starts and stops. It completes the full stitch. see that stitch. This stitch is great for patch pockets, anywhere that you need extra secure stitches uh, to lock it in place if something um, you want a little more stabilized with stitches. That's what that creates. And then of course your last one here is stitch number 29. It creates an eyelet still with your F foot as I have here. And there's your eyelet stitch. This can be great. You can use an awl or uh, to, to poke a hole through the center and you could use it for a very fine cording or ribbon uh, to do something decorative work. That'd be very pretty to use. All right, so that's the Janome 2030 QDC. This is from Next, I'm gonna show you what's in your quilting attachment kit. This is the great bonus with the 2030 QDC Janome sewing machine. So one large item that you'll see is this. It has two screws. This is your quilting guide. You only need one of the screws to install it into this machine. So it sits up here. You'll see on your presser foot plate a little entry hole here. That's where you can screw the screw into place to keep it locked in. So by tightening that screw, you can have your guide. So if you're doing any sort of decorative stitching or top stitching and you want a guided edge, you can have uh, your fabric up against this. This allows you to slide it back and forth as you need it so that your guide can be in the position that you choose. So that's fairly straightforward, but it's a nice accessory. The other accessory you'll have in this quilting attachment kit is your F2 foot. Now, as your regular foot, you'll see I have inserted on here, is your regular F foot. You'll see the little bar in the front. That's your applique foot. And this one is the open toe applique foot. Really nice for clear visibility. It goes in the same way as all of your other clip-on presser feet. And see, sometimes I don't get it right in. There we go. <laughs> it's a clip-on foot just like the others. And then the other foot you'll see is one with a black guide along the side. This is your quarter-inch piecing foot. Beautiful for all your quilt piecing to get that nice accurate 
quarter inch seam allowance. You guide the raw edge of the fabric up against that black guide on the inside and it installs just like your other presser feet as well. This foot here is your even feed foot or your walking foot. Just as your machine has feed dogs on the bottom, your walking foot has feed dogs on the gives you feed dogs on the top of your fabric too. So it grabs the fabric and pulls it through evenly and equally together. Now to install this one, you need to remove the presser foot holder. And this is where we'll use our screwdriver. You remove the screw to take off the foot, the entire foot holder. One little tip I like to suggest is that you screw that screw partially back in, not all the way, but just enough that it will support your foot when you go to install it. This bar here needs to sit on top of the needle screw that comes out to the right hand side here. So to install I like to hold my thumb to keep that lever in the raised position and come in from the back to guide the holder around, around the presser foot bar. I'll just use my fingers to screw it in partially and then I'll use the screwdriver to tighten it. Okay, You'll know that it's in good working order when you start sewing that your the bar of the walking foot is on top of that needle screw and the foot moves up and down as it sews. Always do make sure that before you start sewing with it that you tighten it with your screwdriver. You don't want any movement or play in that foot. We'll remove that one. And then I'll show you how to install. This is your uh, free motion foot. This one, uh, the accessory kit comes with uh, open toe free motion. This little bar here, similar to the walking foot, sits on top of the needle screw. And this is where uh, you install it again against that presser foot bar. Then you screw that one into place. The other addition that you'll have to do if you're moving into uh, doing some free motion quilting is you'll need to drop your feed dogs and your feed dogs are in the back. There's a little lever at the back of the main body of the machine. You slide the slider in towards the machine and you'll see that those feed dogs are dropped. When you want to raise them move it back into the normal position to the far left, but don't panic that they don't come up right away. As soon as you turn your hand wheel down and back up, those presser feet will re-engage back into the raised position. And that's what your quilting attachment kit's included. Have fun with your Janome 2030 QDC.